Would you like to create something different and unique? Well, in this video, you'll learn how to use the tools in Luminar Neo to do just that. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. The following is a clip from my weekly live stream here on YouTube where I edit subscriber submitted images. In this example, you'll see an image that was created with intentional camera movement and you'll learn how to take it to the next level using the tools in Luminar Neo to enhance the color, add some mystical blur, and maybe even another layer as an overlay. So if you're ready to try some experimentation, let's begin. Okay, so we're gonna start with this one. Uh, now we can actually run it through HDR merge as a single image if we want to see what that does. So whenever I'm abstracting, I like to just kind of go, hmm, what if we do this? Okay, so I'm just going to put that in there and just run it through and see what comes out. Uh, it's going to flatten it, so we might get some more detail in the dark areas and the sky to work with. But let's see what it does. This one of the flowers kind of neat too. Okay, so I'm just going to drag this one back into the same folder. Let me just favorite it. So I'm gonna drag this back in here. And now let's see. So this is the one I believe it just created. Yeah, okay, so there's the original. And that's what came out of the HDR merge. Is it better? I don't know kind of like the original, but it was fun to try. You'll notice that we get more of this sort of streaking down here. So that's kind of interesting. Now, if you want to go crazy, you could actually run that, this image through HDR again and see what happens. But let's go from here. So I am taking the one that I dropped into HDR. Now I know that I want to add some color and probably enhance the blur. So I'm going to go into Color Harmony, and that is the tool that we don't have in Lightroom. This one is a tool that I absolutely love. That's why it's up in my favorites, okay? And the color, the color contrast section right here. So when you drag the amount up, wherever your slider is down the bottom here allows you to control how it affects the image, okay? So if I'm on orange, it brightens and adds contrast to orange. If I'm on blue, it does the opposite. Darkens orange, brightens and add contrast to blue. Okay, so you see how we can really bring the orange out here, actually somewhere in there. So see what's happening there? So we could go like wild with the color. Or let's see what happens if we go somewhere over here. That orange is kind of nice, right? It's really bringing that orange out. Then we can also say, well, the cool colors, I'd like them to be cooler. So the purple gets more blue this way or gets more purple pink this way. So I like more blue. Let's go with the blue and orange. So they're really, really opposite colors, okay? Same with the orange. We can make it warmer or more intense orange or go the opposite way, which kind of neutralizes it and is defeating the purpose. So if anything, I'm just gonna go ever so slightly higher. Now, normally I would say, don't go too crazy with the color, but when you're dealing with an abstract, the sky's the limit. So I'm actually gonna dial this back a little bit. Let's go something like that. Okay, so see what's happening there? We got some really neat color coming out, okay? Next, I'm going to do some blur. So there's a number of different ways we can do that, right? We can do that with minus structure. So we can just do like that. But now we've kind of lost all the effect. So structure is not my favorite way to blur. I'm going to undo that. You can do minus details using the details tool, right? So we could go minus on the large and the medium details and increase the small details. Okay, so look at what that does. If I zoom in a little bit, right, it's enhancing the streaks while blurring some of the other bits. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Let's see what happens if we go the opposite way. So if we sharpen the large and the medium details and blur the small details. Okay, so now we've got something different yet again. 
right? So you could really sort of play around with, with these things here and decide, okay, what, which way do we want to go? I kind of like the idea of sharpening the, the small details a little bit. So I'm going to go somewhere in there. Like so. Okay, so we blurred bits and sharpened bits. So there's a before and after so far. All right, let's see. Another way to blur is glow or mystical. Okay, so glow, if we actually use the glow option here, it's going to make the lightest areas glow. So it's kind of glowing the orange. I like that. Okay, so we could make that brighter or darker. I don't know if I want to add contrast or not. So I'm just sort of playing around with it. Okay. It's kind of taking the color away. So I'm not that crazy about it. My favorite is usually Orton effect and it almost always adds brightness. So I usually have to dial it down to about minus 80 or so. And I don't necessarily want to add so much contrast, but let's see what it's doing. Okay. Making some wild colors. So I'm not going to go quite as far, maybe to about 44, 45, okay? I do like glow. Okay. Mystical is another one of my favorites. And we're adding sort of glow on top of glow on top of glow, right? Um, now we've got lots of saturation going on. Maybe we don't want quite so much. Or maybe we want more. We could go neon. In this case, we could go neon, okay? Because when you're doing abstract, the sky's the limit. Literally, <laughs> okay. So softness, ooh, I like that. Let's go. Let's go all the way here. So shadows, we could darken or brighten. Smoothness. This one brings out more of the streaks. I like the streaky idea. Or we could mask it into just certain areas. We haven't masked any of this because it's looking quite nice. Okay. So let's see where we're at. So that's the original, and that's where we're at. Now, let's copy these settings. Actually, let's go back to the library. So now I'm going to do copy the adjustments, and let's paste it onto this one. So this was the original before I ran it through HDR Merge, and let's see what we get. It might take a minute for it to apply. Wowzers. Okay, so it's definitely abstract, but we can go back and dial it down if we want, right? So we can dial down any of these at any point. That one was okay. I didn't use structure, so I can delete it. That one looks okay. Oops. I'll bring that one down just a little bit. And this one I'm going to bring up a little bit. Okay, so this is the one that got went too far on this one. So let's dial that back a little bit. Like so. So now when we go back here, we've kind of got something similar. There's the original, and there's the one that I ran through HDR. Which one do you like? Okay. And we could keep going. The other tool that I haven't used on here is the uh, mood tool, which is where you'll find the LUTs, right? And now we have previews available for them. Okay, so the one that I had in mind, Usually what I do is I bring the amount up higher so that we can really see what it's doing before I start to hover over. Okay, so I am having in mind sort of one of these teal and orange ones. So let's take a look. Anything grab, ooh, that's kind of neat. Number four was kind of neat. Now we're getting some really funky things, right? Ooh, that one brings out some nice blue in the sky. So you get to decide. I kind of like this Kharkiv one or this one. 
That one's going a little too crazy for me. So I'm going to go with that one. See that? Really intense blue. So there's before and after. The other thing that we could add to this one is sun rays. Right? So it's kind of got some neat stuff happening here, but we could literally add a sun in the middle here where this zoom is happening. Okay, so we could go with that. I want to make it warmer. So it got, it's got more yellow. Okay. Do we want more sun or less sun? Glow radius, glow amount. Okay. And then we can literally just sort of decide how many rays we want, maybe less, maybe more. The overall look. I kind of like the idea of the yellow rays only coming down and not over the blue sky. So that was kind of an idea that I just had uh, literally just now. And of course, we can affect the overall look like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask it so it's only on the bottom half like this. So it matches up with the yellow. Okay, so it's only coming down. And if we want to have some going up, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a really big brush and just do like one pass kind of thing, like so. So it just comes up a little bit. Okay. Now I can decide the intensity. Or maybe not quite so long. Like so. How do we like the sun rays? Maybe even more. Maybe we need more. So when you do more, they get sort of thinner. I'm not crazy about the thin ones. I like these ones. There we go. I could literally play with this tool all day and just keep doing random <laughs> until I get something that I like, right? So I just kind of play around. That's some of this balance. Oh, I like that. All right, let's go with something like that. Make them a little bit shorter. Okay, and now you can see what it's doing. So we've kind of got like this alternate universe going on now. Okay, so before and after. <laughs> abstract is fun. Okay, so the key here was it was taken as an abstract with the long exposure and the zoom during the exposure. And then we just went crazy with it. A bird with wings overlaid across it. Okay, uh, well, we can do that because I have a bird actually. All right, so now we have a bird and he is definitely lowered opacity. Do we want to make him a little smaller? Put them in the middle here. We could also rotate him to match the angle. And we could change the blend mode. Okay, So if I make it normal, you'll see just the bird because I've cut him out. Okay, So he's got a, um, he's a transparent uh, PNG. So I cut the background out and made this image like this. Okay? Or we could do something where we blend him. So, so soft light or hard light actually is kind of cool. Okay, so if we do hard light, ooh, I kind of like that. How about that? All right, so there we go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want more step-by-step -step instructions to learn the software, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course. You'll find a link to it in the pinned comment below. Click either of the videos on the screen now to watch more photo editing tutorials using Luminar Neo, Lightroom, and Photoshop.